Hi, how would you like to be able to prove scientifically that anybody that disagrees with you is stupid? And they're so stupid, they don't even know that they're stupid. Welcome to another episode of Crazy Psychology. Elon Musk is a really smart guy, a highly competent engineer and a superior businessman. Is an impressive individual. On December 19, 2021, Elon tweeted an image containing 50 different ideas that he thought all young people should learn. Within Elon's array of tweeted memes was the Dunning-Kruger effect. I, I was surprised. Elon, along with countless others, have been duped by crazy psychology. It's been a while since I've posted a crazy psychology story, so allow me to just quickly recap my credentials. I have a BS in psychology, and in 1999, I was accepted in a doctoral program in experimental psychology at City University of New York. I spent one semester there and withdrew because I didn't like what I was learning. They're making a lot of stuff up. What comes out of academic psychology often makes for compelling headlines. Clickbait for the lazy media getting their stories from Twitter. University study says stupid people don't know that they're stupid. That would be a likely intention grabber of a headline made valid by a paper published in 1999 by social psychologists David Dunning and Justin Kruger. The paper's conclusions became known in the media as the Dunning-Kruger effect, and it's now a widely used meme that's been around for years. Now, widespread use in the media alone triggers my skepticism, but when I began gathering information for this story, I was amazed at just how deeply ingrained and meaningful the Dunning-Kruger effect has become within the political media complex that consistently misinforms us. I saw a pattern in the videos that I looked at on YouTube about the Dunning-Kruger effect. Many of them opened with an attention-grabbing quote from a notable figure expressing the essence of the Dunning-Kruger observations. Frequently, YouTube content creators also used a graphical representation of the results of the study showing how dramatically overconfident incompetent people were. The graph was so widespread, it became a meme, Mount Stupid. And all of the videos that I looked at using the Dunning-Kruger effect as validation of their ideas were using Mount Stupid to validate their political positions. What the content creators were basically saying was people who vote for politicians that I don't like are stupid. And they're too stupid to even know that they're stupid. Here, I have scientific proof. The Dunning-Kruger effect. And Mount Stupid. Crazy psychology. There are some problems here. First, Socrates and Bukowski never said these things. And Mount Stupid is made up nonsense. Here's a graph from the actual study. It doesn't look anything like Mount Stupid. Not that it matters. I think the study sucks. Stupid is stupid does, Mrs. Blue. I have a fundamental problem with these kind of academic studies simply because of the uh, people that they use to conduct their studies are generally students. And they're generally first or second year, you know, freshmen or sophomores. And the students are either required or coerced to take these tests. So that's my general objection to most of these studies, is that they have what would be called in experimental psychology a serious confound in the way that they're collecting their data. But I wanted to give the authors of the study a fair shake, so I read the study. And I gotta tell you, it's hysterical. What real science does is that an experimenter will make a prediction about the phenomena that they're studying. They'll, they'll have a thesis and say, 
well, this is going to happen. And then they design experiments to test those predictions. And at the end of the study, they use usually mathematical models to show how their testing related to their initial predictions. That's real science. That's what real science does. Here, I'll, 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 I'll do a science uh, project for you right here. I'm going to predict that when I drop this eyeglass case, it's going to fall at a rate of 10 meters per second per second, approximately. Pretend this is a, one of those guns that they use to measure fastballs, right? So I'd go like this. I guarantee you that gun, if it was real, would have measured the rate of descent of that eyeglass case to be just under 10 meters per second per second. The real exact answer is in fractions, I'm rounding to 10 meters per second per second. That is a valid scientific test. If you wanted to predict that your eyeglass case was going to fall at a different rate, you can do several iterations of that particular study. And if you had data to prove that for some reason or other, you had an eyeglass case that defied gravity, well, you'd publish that in your paper. Good luck with that one. <laughs> I was unimpressed with the predictions made in the 1999 paper published by Dunning and Kruger, I, I thought the predictions were weak. They were kind of common sense outcomes that one would expect if testing people on their assessment of themselves. We all kind of think that we think highly of ourselves, generally speaking, uh, maybe a little bit more than we should. That's really not that, that you know, grand a prediction that people are going to do that. Uh, what jumped out in my predict in, in this list of predictions, which by the way, I'm going to put a link in, in the description to the study so you can go look at it yourself if you'd like. But they used the word competence, that they were measuring competence. And they used that over and over and over again. And I'm gonna get back to that a little bit later as to, you know, competence in what? It's an important part of the study. So Dunning and Kruger actually did four separate studies in this paper. And the first of which was designed to test the students' knowledge, wisdom, and savvy. Knowledge, wisdom, and savvy. How do you test that? Well, the way they determined a good way to test that was to see how uh, these college students perceived humor. You know, could they see what was funny to other people and what was funny to themselves? You know, what was their knowledge of humor? Okay, you know, humor is complex. I get where they were going with that. It's kind of a nebulous connection, but I'm going to accept it. Okay, so how did they test humor? They got three comedians and used jokes from these three different comedians. The three different comedians were a guy named Jeff Ro Rovin, who I hate to lump in with the next two guys because... He, he was a legitimate author publishing, you know, hundreds of books. The guy's a very prolific author, but he didn't do very much in humor. He was more a, a science fiction adventure author. But again, the other two were Woody Allen and, and Al Franken. Can't make this shit up. <laughs> For those of you that may not know, Woody Allen is a movie maker, a comedian, and a saxophone player from New York City who at 62 years of age abandoned his wife and large family to marry his 18-year-old adopted daughter. After a career as a comedian and a writer, Al Franken became a United States Senator. Senator Franklin resigned in disgrace because of multiple credible accusations that he routinely sexually abused his female staff. So two thirds of the source material used to determine knowledge, wisdom, and savvy came from two well-known perverts. <laughs> Comedy is subjective, Murray. Aware of the subjective nature of humor, Professors Dunning and Kruger had three more tests. I'm only gonna talk about the next one where they were going to test logical reasoning skills. So the uh, group of people that they were testing were 45 students from a basic psychology course. 
that would be like 19 year olds. And what they used to test them were questions from an LSAT study book. The LSAT is the law school admissions test. Early on in the study, the professors said that they were going to be testing people for and determining their competence in their adopted strategies. In other words, if I'm adopting a particular field of study, that would be my adopted strategy, and that's what I would be getting tested in. At least that's what I presumed from the phrase adopted strategies. But they were testing these young psychology students, basic psychology at that, on how to get into law school. How that measures up with adopted strategies, well, I don't know. But that's a fundamental flaw in the whole study, is if you're going to be claiming people are competent uh, or incompetent, what are they competent or incompetent in? And they didn't define that very well in the study. If you tested me for my competence in quantum physics, I wouldn't measure up very well under that test. I'm sure that I would qualify as being incompetent. And that's a fundamental problem with this whole study, is what exactly is it that they're measuring here? Now, I'm being a little bit tongue in cheek, and I'm gonna move on now to my basic criticism of this and many psychological studies. But before I do, I wanna mention that I did see a, a, a video while I was researching this that was a very well done video that goes into the details of this study, and he reviews some of the statistics and, and, and the methodology in much more technical detail than I'm doing here. So I'm gonna offer you a link to that in, in the description below if you're interested in that type of thing. He reached generally the same conclusion that I did that this study is a little bit weak when it comes to scientific rigor. Ah, yeah, but who am I, this lowly undergraduate guy critiquing all of these brilliant PhDs, I'm gonna give them a pass. I'm going to say that my criticisms, uh, my analysis of their study concluding that there's a lack of scientific rigor, I'm going to say that all of that is invalid and that Dunning and Kruger, what they set out to measure, they actually did measure. So what their results are saying, basically, is that young college students are overconfident. Remember that headline that I talked about at the beginning of this video, the one that, that says, stupid people don't know that they're stupid and they used a Dunning-Kruger effect as some kind of scientific validation of that conclusion? Here's a more accurate headline. Sophomores are sophomoric. Now, why is any of this important? It's because the clickbait studies coming out of academia that are projected out into the media, uh, out into the culture by the lazy media, are misinforming the culture. And here's a great example of that. I did a lot of work studying this the, the content for this video, uh, both written and, and video sources, but I like video, that's my medium. And I, I discovered this woman who appears to me to be very intelligent, articulate, and clearly earnest. And she thinks that she can save the world with the Dunning-Kruger effect. What is the greatest problem of today's world? Is it climate change, growth of global populism, fake news? or risk of terrorism? There is one pattern beneath the surface of all of these great global threats, which makes everything even worse. It is the certainty of one's own opinion. The core of this bias is the so-called Dunning-Kruger effect. The less knowledge, the higher the confidence. And this peak is quite a significant problem. As Václav Havel said, follow those who seek the truth, but run away from those who have found it. Call me crazy, but I'll wager that that woman has no idea that she's trying to save the world using a bogus psychological construct made possible in part by Al Franken and Woody Allen. Be skeptical of everything.
crazy psychology.